Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana, monthly report. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. We want to welcome everyone back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana Monthly Report. We're in Indianapolis, Indiana on WHMB 40, as you know, and we send quite a bit of information uh, scrolling across the screen. And our producer, Jeff, he does a great job uh, giving uh, verbal information out. So I would say get the information and share that information. Uh, make those contact calls on there so that you can help benefit your life or benefit the life of someone else that meets the qualifications for the service that we offer. Uh, and that service is the National Federation of the Blind Newsline. It is a service of the National Federation of the Blind. And here in Indiana, it's sponsored through the State Talking Book and Braille Library Services. So. Um, with National Federation of the Blind uh, Newsline. It's a free, audible information service. Once again, it is free for those that are blind, visually impaired, or print challenger. Uh, there are individuals coping with um, dyslexia, uh, those that are, have the uh, shaking hand syndrome, uh, those that are um, even deaf and blind can now access this service free. They can read their newspapers. Uh, they can read the Indianapolis Star. They can read the national newspapers, the, the, the tribunes and uh, the journals and associated presses around the world uh, and around the state. We have world newspapers as well, uh, 15 of them that individuals can read to keep up with what's going on in other countries. And believe you me, um, there is a plethora of information out there, as you all know and uh, students uh, that are in college or students that are um, in grade school all the way on up uh, can read uh, to keep up with current events. Uh, so it, it, it kind of levels a playing field, Florence, wouldn't you say? I would say so. And in addition to the newspapers and magazines, I mean, well, in addition to the newspapers, there are magazines. Uh, there's over 60 magazines. Um, one of my favorites is Guy Post magazines. There's uh, Wired magazines. There's PC uh, magazines for people who are interested in computers. There's magazines on healthcare, preventive care, uh, diabetes, diabetes living, diabetes forum. There's Reader's Digest there, Jet magazine, uh, Indianapolis Monthly. There's a wealth of, of magazines. In addition to the magazines, there's also weather listings, uh, sales circulars, Target, Walmart sales circulars, and uh, they actually um, we get more information uh, with this holiday season starting. Oh goodness, there's a wealth of information with the NFB Newsline. It, it is a fantastic service. And people can access uh, that through several methods. You can access it through, uh, we do have an app with a um, uh, iPhone. Uh, there's also the iPad and um, uh, iPod. Uh, there's also uh, the Victor Reader Stream mm -hmm. that we use, uh, the digital talking player that you receive uh, from the Talking Book and Braille Library services, and also your computer. You can use it on your computer as well. So um, those are some of the methods that you can access this free service. Uh, individuals love to read the newspapers. Uh, they love to read the magazines. Blind citizens are tax-paying citizens that love to keep up with information. We like to find out about voting rights. Uh, we like to find out what our legislators are doing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that impact our lives, and we are active participants. And National Federation of the Blind Newsline Service allows us to participate actively uh, in many facets of our lives. So we're going to take us a short break and we'll be right back with our guests because 
we have some very in-depth uh, information that individuals need to know about the life of transitioning um, through blindness as a married couple. So we'll be right back here on WHMB 40. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we if you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. Wow, I scored a touchdown when I found sports on NFB Newsline. I enjoy reading TV guide listings on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind. We read NFB Newsline. It's free. Welcome back, and we want to get straight on this topic because it is uh, in-depth. So um, once again, uh, we want to introduce you to our guest, Florence. Yes, Mr. Brian Clark and his beautiful wife, Miss Barbara Dosh. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Brian, you left us with uh, um, some great information. Let's kind of recap. Um, uh, we're, we're, you were losing your sight and you were in a place that you never had been before. Yeah, um, losing one sight, I, you know, I, I have not lost a child, but I would say that it might be the equivalent of something like that because it's such a large part of who you are. Um, you know, I, fortunately, I, I was uh, temporarily sighted for about 45 years of my life. Um, lost my vision about three years ago. And it's a process. It's, it's not something that, that most people can get over quickly or easily. Um, I think talking to a lot of people, the general estimate is that it takes generally about two years for somebody to work through all the different process or d different stages of grief and, and, and just getting used to uh, being blind. And it's not just the physical loss of sight. Your brain has to kind of get used to not getting the visual input. Um, and so it, it's a long process. And I, it was about a year ago, um, my days consisted of waking up every day and going and sitting into my garage and just listening to the radio or listening to books. And, and I did not think my future was very bright at all. Um, I thought my blindness was a prison and it was going to keep me from doing a lot of the things that I enjoyed in life. Um, but I was fortunate that I, that I met some people in the National Federation of the Blind, and I attended my first state convention last year, and it was at that convention that I heard a guy named Lonnie Bedwell stand mm -hmm. up there in the front and talk about all these amazing things that he's been able to do as a blind person, from kayaking the entire uh, Colorado River through the Grand Canyon, he's the first blind person to ever do that, to climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and and snow skiing and doing all these crazy, amazing things. And even though I may not ever do that sort of activity, yeah, it just too. opened my eyes that it's possible. Mm -hmm. It is very possible. And, and Barb, uh, while um, Brian was sitting, contemplating, and maybe being a, in a state of uncertainty, uh, what were you going through? It was, it was definitely a challenge. Um, from my husband who would wake up every morning, go off to work, um, very happy person, um, always full of jokes. Um, go going from our regular schedule from work to dinner and family night to um, Brian waking up in the morning, um, barely wanting to eat, um, didn't really want help with breakfast, so he, I think he just wouldn't eat because he didn't know how to do some things by himself. He would go off into the garage. It was summertime. Um, he 
sometimes would open the garage door, sometimes he wouldn't. It would, I would go out there and check on him. It was warm, and he just didn't respond much to anything. I, I tried to think of things we could do, and I was dumbfounded. To be able to find things to entertain a blind person to me was beyond my capabilities. So what I did is I turned to the internet. I just tried to find any type of group that was available. Um, I reached out to different um, eye doctors, and they had then mentioned the um, for Brian to go and get training at. Bosma. Um, I'm sorry. Was it Bosma? Um, through Bosma, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, we were unaware of who Bosma was, and then we heard about VR, and then we went to VR, and they started talking about computer programs that would be able to help them. They talked about different jobs that Bosma might be able to help them with. It still seemed beyond Brian's capabilities at that time. It was there, but he didn't really react to it very much. So as a wife, basically, you were just trying to help him yes. find... Yes. Find his way through this. Absolutely. And um, help him p put back the pieces, pick Correct. up the pieces and put his life back together. That's what it sounds like. Yes. I, now, I, I can't even tell people how fortunate and blessed that I am that I had a wife that stuck with me through the whole process because I know that, um, I know that there's a lot of couples that it's just too much. Blindness you know, affects the whole family. It does. It does. Yes, it does. And, and Barb stood by my side and said, we're going to get through this together. And she was the strength of our family for quite a while. And yeah. that was that's a different role for her. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes some adjustment, but she kind of willed us through the rocky times. Oh, Barbara. No, you have children as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how did this uh, um, impact the children? How did you guys... Uh, really get this uh, introduced to the children and, and, and what was their impact on them? Well, our son, AJ, he's now a senior in high school. Um, so he was a little bit older. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't quite a, a young child. So, uh, you know, I, fortunately, AJ um, has such a good helping spirit um, that he was, you know, a firsthand witness to what was going on. I think he understood all along that, that it was going to be, you know, a long process to get through it. Um, he's helpful, more helpful than um, I think most kids his age would have been. Um, and so for AJ, I think it was just a matter of kind of having faith in me and my capabilities and just kind of waiting. Patience is, is a big part of getting through the whole process of losing your vision. And I think he was pretty patient as well. I would I would talk to him and let him know that it's still Brian. He's still able to do things. We're just going to have to find different ways to do it. And my son was very easy to understand that and even would often help with ideas. Why don't we try this? Why don't we help him out with that? So in, in some ways, he was a little worried watching this happen to his dad. But like me, he was like, let's do what we need to do to make this, this family keep going. So had you two um, previously had anybody in your family been blind or had you had any um, encounters with people that are blind prior to your losing your sight, um, Brian? No, um, and I, I don't ever recall in my life, um, except maybe when I was really little, ever really meeting or being around any blind people at all. Um, and I know that, that sounds kind of shocking, but I... You know, we lived out in Brownsburg, which is not really that accessible for blind people. A, a lot of the blind people in Indiana live in the Indianapolis area just because of transportation needs and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but blindness was a totally new um, experience and concept for us. Um, I think we carried preconceived notions like a lot of sighted people do uh, about blindness and the fears that come from blindness and how are we going to do this and how are we going to do that. And the reality is, is that once you kind of get over those fears, it allows you to figure out how to do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with fear is a big, big part of it. And, you know, we, we relied on our faith a lot and just an understanding that 
Um, these things happened for a reason and that we still had a purpose in life. And That's right. Once we, got, once we got to the point of kind of seeing what that purpose is, and we, we feel like our purpose is to serve the blind community as best we can, um, once we got to that point, then that really helped us uh, get to acceptance and moving forward and just putting those fears behind us and, and figuring out you know, ways to do stuff. Well, getting acceptance and moving forward. That's great right there, Brian. So we're going to get some acceptance and we're going to move forward because we got to take a break. <laughs> so we'll be right back on WHMB 40. Stay tuned. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. Dad, you read really some of both too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free. Welcome back, and we have just been having a great time uh, with Brian and Barbara. And uh, Barbara, you have been such a support system, such a, a, a loving wife, uh, and supported Brian. And I'm sure Brian has been such a loving husband, and you guys have come to a point of um, tranquility. Absolutely. Um, Share with us how um, going through uh, the turmoil uh, and just beginning to see the light, um, how did that uh, inspire you? Well, when we started finding the, the NFB and found our biggest thing was meeting other blind people. Being able to talk about what was going on explain our fears, hear that other people have gone through the same thing, really touched our hearts. Because while they went through everything that we did, we saw them as strong people, working jobs, going out and, and having fun, doing different things such as bowling, um, getting together and playing cards, knowing that everything out there is accessible. You just have to be able to ask for it or, or just even work on making it yourself. You know, it's not a, a woe is me life then as you're um, describing, you know. Absolutely. And I know there's people out there scratching their head right now. What you mean going bowling and being blind? <laughs> what you mean playing cards and being blind, you know? Right. Uh, um, you know, we do those things. Uh, we we have fun, mm -hmm. you know. We even play golf. Brian, did you make it to the, were you up there during the time at Heinz where the, uh, where the offering was for going out to golf courses? Yeah, I, I picked up golf again this summer. Um, I had done it for about 35 years, and I never thought that I would ever play golf ever again. But uh, fortunately, my dad took me out to the driving range, and we just, on a lark, we decided to see if I could hit a golf ball. And muscle memory, <laughs> I was still able to do it. So I've started golfing again, and you know I don't do it as well as I used to, but I, I think with uh, a little practice and getting back into it, um, I hope to probably um, turn out to be a pretty good golfer again. Awesome. And, you know, they had that a blind um, pro golfing uh, tour as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you might want to look into that because I know I'm not going to make it because uh, I do too many divots and too many fours. <laughs> 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 but uh, um, so, you know, overcoming um, and, and, and understanding the situation and uh, 
uh, in your lives uh, spiritually. You know, you mentioned something about uh, the spiritual aspect of it all. You want to share yeah. a little bit more of that? Yeah, I, you know, the, the two primary tools that we had in helping us get through the rough times for us was our faith and our, our sense of humor. Um, our faith allowed us to recognize that, that um, we don't know the reasons why we had to go through it, but there definitely were reasons for it. Um, and just being able to have a little bit of patience and waiting for opportunities. And now we can look back and see that it, pretty, it, it was a definite path. There is a definite path for us mm -hmm. and there is a purpose for us the rest of our lives. Uh, our sense of humor, we, we both have a pretty, pretty good sense of humor and um, you know, we, we find amusement in a lot of the silly things like I'll walk into a wall <laughs> and the first thing out of Barb's mouth is, are you okay? And then when she realizes I'm okay, she gets a laugh out of it because it really is kind of funny because <laughs> yeah. I'll just be going along and smack, walk, walk right into a wall. So It's like, how did that get there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who or put that wall there? Say, excuse me, to a pillar. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. because we're so polite sometimes. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. And, uh, you, know, and uh, you know, your attitude is your latitude um, in, in, in any facet of life, uh, including mm -hmm. blindness. Mm -hmm. uh, you still find people are still um, angry. Mm -hmm. um, yes. People are sometimes yes. frustrated um, um, and, and they don't too. use their cane skills sometime and mm -hmm. uh, learning the braille to communicate and, and using services that, like the National Federation of the Blind Newsline and, and a lot of the other uh, services that we offer um, as an affiliate, you know, with um, anywhere from the diabetic division to the parenting division to mm -hmm. the senior division to the student division. I mean, we just offer so much. And then with technology out there, uh, there's so much to, uh, to learn and so much to um, actually behold, you mm -hmm. know, um, in our lives as, as blind citizens and, and overcoming uh, the, the, the stigma. Yeah because we're not defined by the condition of blindness. We know that as an organization and we know that as individuals. That's right. Just conveying that to other individuals. Florence, you want to add to that? Well, I mean, as far as the, um, we all know that you can still live the life you want because people have their own uh, misconceptions about blindness and what they think we cannot do. You know, but the thing about it is that if you look at it, you say, well, if they can do it, I can do it. With the proper tools, we're capable of doing it. You know. Yeah, so, so Barb, you didn't have a, a, some of the misperceptions. Um, you know, uh, with uh, uh, how is he going to bathe himself? Uh, you know, uh, some of the questions that you get. You want to share some of the weirdest questions you ever gotten uh, from individuals that just didn't know. Um, some some weird things that actually happen is we will sit down at a restaurant. And I'll go over the menu with Brian, and they will come to me, and they'll say very loudly, what does he want? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and, and I'll just look at them, and I'll go, Brian, what do you want? And I, I always find that a little funny. Um, another thing that um, I found very funny was when Brian first went to Bosma, um, he was talking with a gentleman who was trying to see what Brian's skills were. And he asked Brian, how do you put toothpaste on your toothbrush? And Brian said, well, I just take the toothpaste and I squirt it in my mouth and then I brush my teeth. Oh, I sat there and okay. laughed because I thought he was being funny. Mm -hmm. And I realized that's actually what he does. And it, it's genius, in fact, to, to where it's it just simple things. Um, I know you were mentioning, Florence, that blind people can do everything. We have a friend who says... Blind people can do everything but drive cars, and that's coming in the future. That's right. Mm, that's sure that's it. coming. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we tell people that all the time. You know, when they're uh, looking at blind people, they're all, uh, have you ever met a blind person? And, no. Right. You know, and they always have questions. And the thing about it is that some of them are just reluctant to ask. They just don't know how to ask, what things might offend us. I think that's, um, that's why they don't ask. Right. But we also, the way I look at it is that we should uh, be always be open, always be open to educate. Right. And that's a good tool. That's a good way to put it, too, to be open to educate. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, you um, 
has some uh, goals and objectives in your future. Um, you want to share a little bit of that with us? Sure. Um, now that I've kind of gone through this last year and, and gotten additional training, um, mobility and computers and, and things like that, and attended the Heinz VA facility, um, I am enrolled and, and ready to start the next class in the Randolph Shepard Vending Program. Great. Um, that's a program where uh, blind people get first priority at mm -hmm. federal and state facilities um, that serve food, whether it's a cafeteria or a snack bar or vending machines on, on a rest area, on a highway, and things like that. Wow, that is so fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, there is life after blindness. There he is. And um, we're going to get ready to head out because we only have about 30 seconds left in our program. So, Florence, uh, take us out of here. Okay, I wanted to just share with our listeners that with love, hope, and determination, we transform dreams into reality. Thank you very much, Brian and Barbara. Thank you. And Thank God you. bless you both. And we'll be seeing, uh, no pun intended, listening of your audience. We'll be back with you next week. Next so week. So enjoy yourselves. We'll see you then. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind, and we read NFB Newsline. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. Federation of the Blind, Indiana Monthly Report. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 317-205-9226. That's 317-205-9226. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want. <laughs>